Today, the teenage YouTube sensation with over 2.5 million fans. Chelsea Crockett joins us live. And then, a freak accident. I just like thought I was gonna die in a second. At 75 miles per hour. It actually ripped the truck in half. Watch a split second miracle unfold. You still found it in your heart to protect me. On today's 700 Club. Welcome, folks, to this edition of the 700 Club. Delighted to have you with us. You know, it looks like the elites may be turning on the Democrats, which is a strange thing because the liberal media has usually been against the Republicans. Now an expose in the Washington Post, of all things, talking about Fusion GPS. You said, what is Fusion GPS? Well, that is the company, the mysterious company, that was behind the Christopher Steele expose and the dossier on Trump. It turns out it was paid for by the Democrats, by the Hillary Clinton campaign. And the whole thing has been a put up and the FBI has been dancing to their tune. And there needs to be an investigation of the FBI for their complicity in this thing. I mean, it is a scandal of major proportions and it was featured in the Washington Post. How about them apples? Wow, that's pretty, uh, this is breaking news. Well, it, it is big time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Fusion GPS. But the thing is, uh, while that's going on, the Republicans are fighting each other. They ought to say, my enemies are in collapse. I, it's time to attack. Instead of that, they're fighting each other. Talk about it. Yeah, the public feuding among Republicans began just before President Trump made his latest pitch for his tax plan in Washington. And as Abigail Robertson reports, not everyone gave him a warm welcome. It's no secret President Trump has enemies, even within his own party. That all came to the forefront Tuesday as President Trump spoke to Senate Republicans on Capitol Hill, trying to unite the party around tax reform. But talks of unity were off to a rocky start when Senator Bob Corker made these comments ahead of his visit. I expressed concerns a few weeks ago about his, his leadership and just his stability and uh, the lack of desire to be competent on issues and understand and, and uh, you know, I, I, nothing has changed. President Trump fired back on Twitter, calling Corker incompetent and saying he couldn't even get elected as dog catcher. But the biggest news came when Arizona Senator Jeff Flake announced he will not seek re-election in 2018, criticizing today's political state, saying America has lost its moorings. It is also clear to me for the moment that we have given in or given up on the core principles in favor of a more viscerally satisfied anger and resentment. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell steered clear of the feuds, saying he wants to concentrate on their agenda and not any other distractions. What I have an obligation to do is to try to achieve the greatest cohesion I can among 52 Republicans to try to achieve for the American people the agenda that we set out to achieve. And tax reform is what we are about. If there's anything that unifies Republicans, it's tax reform. The tax plan seems to be on schedule, with House Republicans saying they're even willing to pass a Senate budget resolution many don't agree with in order to expedite tax reform. I think the Senate budget is awful, and I will vote for it because the, the, the outcome of tax reform is so important. We whipped it yesterday and I whipped for it. It's not everything that we want, but I'm like Ronald Reagan. You take 70% of what you can now and come back for the rest of it later. Congressional leaders are trying to have a tax plan in place by the beginning of next year, knowing that if they don't, they could pay the price in the 2018 elections. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. It is so important that they pass that tax plan. And it's a real possibility, the way things are coming, they might get it done before Christmas, which would be awesome. Uh, it would be a great achievement that they could go into the next year with. I mean, I, let's hope that's going to be the case. Uh, what do you think? Well, I know that is Trump's number one yeah. thing right now, but all this, this fighting and this 
Twitter wars is really uh, oh, the, putting a wrench in everything. They'll stop that. They, they, you know, I think Mitch, I, I really have a lot of confidence in Mitch McConnell. Yeah. And I also have confidence in the intelligence of these people. They understand they've got to do it. They don't, it's not an optional uh, extra. It's not something that they can put aside and not do. They screwed up on health care. They had said for seven years, we're going to repeal and replace Obamacare. Then came the crucial vote, and John McCain uh, faltered, and a couple of those other the women, uh, one from uh, Maine and one from Alaska, voted against it, and so the, the, they couldn't uh, repeal it. But in terms of uh, tax relief, they can't go before the American people saying, we've raised your taxes or we haven't cut your taxes. And the Democrats can't stand against it. If they want to go before the American people and say, well, we're the ones that kept you from having a break uh, of, of two or $3,000 a year in your taxes, we kept that from happening. Aren't you proud of us? So the answer is you're going to be kicked out of office. And they all know it. So it's happening. And uh, uh, we're very delighted to see that. But it very, it very possibly could go through before Christmas. And if that's the case, it would be a wonderful Christmas present for the American people. Well, uh, and as I mentioned earlier in this show, investigations into the Trump administration have routinely been in the headlines. But now Democrats are under the microscope. Can you believe that? John Jessup has it. That's right, Pat. Congressional Republicans have launched two investigations, including one involving a, a deal that gave Russia control of 20 percent of the U.S. uranium supply. And there's a new report about who paid for the controversial research against candidate Donald Trump in last year's election. Mark Martin has the story. Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign is once again in the spotlight after the Washington Post report that the campaign and the Democratic National Committee helped pay for political research into Donald Trump. That research was carried out by a group called Fusion GPS and it resulted in the now well-known dossier which contained allegations about Trump's connections to Russia and possible collusion between the Kremlin and Trump's campaign. A person familiar with the matter who spoke on condition of anonymity provided the information. Trump has repeatedly said the document is not true, and he recently questioned on Twitter if Democrats or the FBI assisted in funding it. The person familiar with the matter said an attorney for the Clinton campaign and the DNC, along with his law firm, brokered the deal. The information has been used in the probe into Russian meddling in last year's election by special counsel Robert Mueller. And House Republicans have started two new investigations, one into the Obama administration's Justice Department and the other involving Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server while she was Secretary of State. Republican House leaders want to know how President Obama's Justice Department handled a deal that ended up putting Russia in charge of more than 20 percent of the U.S. supply of uranium. So what we're here today to announce is, a, is an inquiry into uh, Russia's involvement into uh, the uranium deal that was uh, done several years ago. Uh, this is uh, just the beginning of this probe. We do have a, a witness who is a confidential informant who, who wants to, to, to talk about uh, his role in this. And um, we're in contact with the Justice Department to release him from a non-disclosure agreement. Um, if that doesn't work out in, in timely fashion, then we obviously would be able to subpoena him. Democrats say the Republican-led investigations are designed to distract attention from the different probes into alleged Russian meddling in last year's presidential election. Clinton said the same thing and called the new attention on the uranium deal baloney. But Republicans say they want to know how the deal worked and why 20 percent of the United States uranium was given to a Russian-owned company. Mark Martin, CBN News. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Pat, back to you. You know, we had the man who wrote the expose on the Clinton money. Uh, it was so clear this particular uh, corporation was Canadian and the Canadian company gave large sums and perhaps stock to the Clinton Foundation. There was no question about it. And this uranium one was uh, one of the permutations of that company as they got more and more of the uranium. Uranium is crucial. You know, it's crucial to build atomic bombs. And without uranium, you don't have anything. 
So by giving up the American sources of uranium to the Russians, uh, we have crippled ourselves for in the future. And th this was a payoff to the Clinton Foundation. And the, the, the uh, research was very clear on it. And it was out a long time ago, and nobody's been talking about it. But suddenly it's, it's gotten, because it's become Uranium One. It wasn't Uranium One initially. It was something else that had a different name. And uh, the, the uh, person who was involved in it gained several billion dollars. We're talking about big money. Uh, and he, again, was a contributor of, of huge amounts of money to the Clinton Foundation, while um, I think Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, uh, at least just before that. But in any event, the, the, the whole thing just stinks to high heaven. And I, it looks like the FBI, with James Comey, is seriously compromised. And it looks like Mueller was involved. Uh, you know, Holder was uh, the Attorney General. Uh, that whole bunch was compromised. And the whole thing looks tainted. And it looks like to me that they are not qualified to continue this uh, probe. And I think it's time for the president to tell his uh, Rosenstein and those others in his administration, the special prosecutor has got to go. Uh, it's time to cut this thing off. And I believe that you'll hear in the next well, few months that Trump has said, enough already. You haven't found one thing. We weren't complicit with any Russians. This whole thing was a scam paid for by the Democrats. And we want to shut this inquiry down. And I think uh, maybe some of the congressional committees will come up with some different answers. But it will all be supportive of Trump. And I, I, th I think it's time to stop it because the FBI is seriously compromised. Comey and Mueller together as along with Loretta Lynch and those in the Justice Department, seriously compromised. Well, there's a good news out of the FBI, however, and John has that report, so it isn't all bad. Here's the good news from that agency. That's right, Pat. On the flip side, this year, a special FBI trafficking effort has saved 84 children from a life of slavery and abuse. Heather Sells gives us this behind-the-scenes look at an annual trafficking sting that leads to rescues across the country. The FBI partners with state and local authorities to go after traffickers of children right in our own backyards. Perhaps the most disturbing case this year, the sale of a three-month-old baby and a five-year-old for $600. Agents scoured online sites and ads to discover many of the children being trafficked. Their search took them to hotels where they found kids, along with lots of cell phones, cash, and even stuffed animals. Our primary goal is really to recover children, and then not only from the recovery standpoint, but providing them victim services to get them back home or back integrated into society. Victim specialists working with the officers help assure the rescued that they're safe and that help is available. You're, you're okay, all right? You're not in trouble. It's trying to figure out what their background is. Are they runaways? Have they been in the system in foster care? Um, do they have any kind of juvenile delinquency history? Um, what does their parent life look like? Do they have any support? Have they been in school? Agents also located victims in casinos and at truck stops and they found children from other countries. They can help you stay in the United States or go back home to family. So you don't have to deal with the scary stuff. Victim advocates quickly point out these operations only make a dent in the problem. Although no one knows the real number, it's believed thousands of children are sexually exploited in the U.S. each year. Those rescued face a long and hard recovery, and advocates maintain the U.S. does not put enough resources into caring for these children. Their trauma is often compared to post-traumatic stress disorder, which requires a host of services and the grace of God to overcome. Heather Sell, CBN News. Thanks, Heather. Well, the case of a baker who wouldn't make a cake for a gay marriage celebration is likely to be the biggest religious rights case in this Supreme Court term. 
Now, those who oppose Jack Phillips, the baker, accuse him of discrimination against gays. But as Paul Strand reports, some who have suffered discrimination in America for centuries are offering Phillips their support. Some folks say when Colorado baker Jack Phillips refused to bake a cake to celebrate a gay wedding, that was the same as segregationists in the South refusing to serve blacks at lunch counters. But others say there's a whole different side to the story. We gather in support of Jack This Phillips. group of civil rights leaders has come together to insist that Jack Phillips' refusal as a Christian to support gay marriage isn't even close to the kind of discrimination shown against African Americans in the past. They've launched a website, wegotyourbackjack.com. Janet Boynes lived as a lesbian for 14 years, but came out of that lifestyle. I am very concerned that the LGBT activists have hijacked the civil rights movement for African Americans. The civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s was a movement to secure for African Americans the basic privileges and the right of U.S. citizenship that whites and others already had. Homosexuals, on the other hand, have always had the rights. They continue, however, to demand special rights based on their sexual behavior. This is based on a sin and a faith uh, issue. These folks point out the real discrimination here isn't against the gays, but the religious believers. A person, according to their faith, should not be compelled to take part in what they believe is a sin. If we don't allow a person to live by his conscience, you discriminate against the Christian. Not only are they coming against him, but they're coming against the uh, Constitution of these United States of America. And Henderson warns that limiting someone's freedom of religion goes against America's principles. When we start to infringe upon another person's rights, then we have taken away the freedom that America offers. Sexual behavior is not the same as skin color. I could change from gay to straight, but I cannot change the color of my skin. It is an immutable, unchangeable characteristic. I resent having my race compared to what other people do in bed. Paul Strand, CBN News, the Supreme Court. And Pat, a lot of people will be paying close attention to this case when it goes to oral arguments in early December. No question. I've been wondering how long it's going to take the black folks to say just exactly what those people said. You know, this is skin color. It's a different matter. The one is a preference of how I'm going to perform sex acts. And to give that class of people special privileges beyond uh, what you would normally expect uh, is wrong. And, you know, the Constitution, the First Amendment, is so clear. Congress, of course, it's, it's Congress, not the states, but Congress will uh, make uh, no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. We can't establish a religion, nor can we prohibit the free exercise of it. And when this is done on the federal level or by the state level, by uh, this is a state action uh, against these bakers who said, we will not participate in homosexuality. And yet the state uh, said, we're going to fine you unless you do. And what these, these uh, black folks are saying very, very clearly is that, look, what we were fighting for was basic rights as Americans. These people are asking for special privileges, and I don't think we should give it to them. But it's going before the Supreme Court, and I believe with the Constitution of the Supreme Court as it is, that they'll come, out, come down on the side of the bakers, but we'll have to see. John. Well, Pat, in health news, the rate of cancer cases tied to being overweight and obesity is on the rise in the United States. The director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention warns while the rate of other cancers has dropped in the last decade, cancers linked to being overweight have been climbing. CDC Director Brenda Fitzgerald writes on FoxNews.com that even though two out of three adults weigh more than they should, Fewer than half of Americans know that being obese raises their risk of cancer. And Pat, she also adds that avoiding gaining weight is one of the best ways to stay healthy. Well, we've been talking about this. First of all, they're talking about sugar um, being a causative agent in a number of these uh, illnesses. We've known about uh, type 2 diabetes, adult onset diabetes, which is a killer. And some of these other things, and it's, it, 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 they use the term inflammation, and that's there. But uh, weight gain, tremendous weight gain, uh, leading to heart attacks, leading to cancer, leading to other diseases. 
Wendy, I'm so glad that you stay fit. You're out <laughs> hiking around the mountains. You know, I love to hike, and I love fish. I am in. Lo I've been eating so much fish this uh, summer and fall, and it really does help keep your weight down. It's such a great protein. I have a friend who catches a lot of flounder, and I'm. A, and I made, and it's so easy to make, and it was yeah. cooked so quickly, and you feel amazing after. So if you just have your fish and your salad, and you still can have dessert if you have, don't have bread. And I was just, I told you, in Canada, and they have the best chocolate up there, Pat. I don't know what it is about <laughs> Canada, and your, their chocolate is so much better than ours. I think yeah. it's their cream, their, their cows, or I don't know, right. cream. They, and you, you ate a lot of that. Oh, I do. <laughs> Especially right. when I'm traveling, you need the you need the sugar to you know when you're traveling. Well, the, but the, the, they fish. catch a bunch of salmon up there. That's good, but <laughs> that's right. Uh, fish are very healthy. There's no question, you know. Um, and fish oil, the DHA, is the type of fish oil that's good for your heart. And I, I believe in taking that. It's very important. But all right. Well, coming up, a new Texas adoption law that's under heavy fire. Being told that their policy not to place kids with same-sex families was pretty hard to hear. We believe that God's design for a family is a man and a woman. The battle between the LGBT community and faith-based adoption providers is up next. Plus, we've got your questions, honest answers. Liz says, with the threat of an EMP seeming more real and the risk of losing food and electricity, do you think it is wise to store up food and supplies? Stay tuned for Pat's answer and much more after this. A new law in Texas protects faith-based adoption agencies if they won't place children with same-sex couples. Charlene Aaron visited one agency where she learned why the legislation is considered a victory. When it comes to adoption, putting children with same-sex couples often leads to a fierce debate. This Michigan couple is suing the state after two Christian adoption agencies turned them away because they're gay. I'm very lucky, I have very supportive friends and family, so, and I work in a very supportive environment, so I've, I really have not faced any discrimination over being gay, so calling the agencies and being told that it's their policy not to place kids with same-sex families was pretty hard to hear. In order to prevent those lawsuits in Texas, lawmakers passed legislation that would protect Christian adoption agencies for refusing gay couples. Right now in Texas, there are more than 30,000 kids who need to know the love of a family. Faith-based operations make up 25% of the child-placing agencies in Texas. Have you considered becoming a foster parent? Over the past few years, many stopped taking cases from the state's foster care system, fearing their biblical view of marriage would clash with the LGBT community. Your religious convictions should not deny you the opportunity to care for children. Buckner International is an evangelical charity that serves more than 1,000 Texas children each year. There are just not enough places for them. And here in Texas, we've had children who've had to sleep on the floor of offices because there was nowhere to take them that night or the next night. The Freedom to Serve Children Act protects groups like Buckner if they refuse to place children with gay couples. We believe that God's design for a family is a man and a woman. That's our biblically held belief. And so based on that and with a number of other faith-based providers here in Texas, and obviously with the support of the legislature and the governor of Texas, uh, we have been able to secure this extra layer of protection for us to be able to really just live out our biblical convictions. The law has drawn fierce backlash from the LGBT community, and the state of California has even banned state-sponsored travel to Texas, citing discrimination based on sexual orientation. The discrimination claim has been expanded to include seven other states. To travel to these states at state expense would mean that we would be using taxpayer dollars to support these states, and we think it would be an offense to all those individuals in America who feel the scourge of discrimination. It affects the children because there's so many other couples like us out there who want to provide a home for these kids and are being told no because of this. Supporters of the Texas law disagree. Because at the end of the day, what we're trying to get is more 
homes. And I don't think this prevents home, more homes from coming from any sector of society from coming to the table. Christians who feel their beliefs on marriage and family are increasingly attacked see that as a major victory for religious freedom. Collins maintains it's also about saving lives. For us, what it comes down to is what about the children? Do they win? Is this a win for the children, not for any group or organization? It really is about the kids. He's just thankful the law allows them to continue helping the state's most vulnerable. We believe this is a very inclusive law. We're not saying in any way that some people are bad and shouldn't be parents. We're just saying this is what we believe. These are sincerely held religious con convictions that we have, and we want to continue to be able to do what we've done uh, for 138 years now. Charlene Aaron, CBN News, Dallas. Well, they say don't mess with Texas. The Texans are doing a good thing, and we, we applaud Texas. All right, let's take some questions. Yes, we got some questions here. Let's start with Liz. With the threat of an EMP seeming more real and the risk of losing food and electricity, do you think it is wise to store up food and supplies? Uh, well, uh, uh, electronic magnetic pulse is an EMP, and the threat of one is very real. Uh, the thing that I have urged, and I urge now those in authority in this nation to harden our uh, grid. Uh, they're not doing it. It would take a few billion dollars, a, 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 a virtual drop in the bucket, considering how much money we spent, to harden the electrical grid so that those transformers wouldn't get fried with an EMP. It could come from a solar flare. It could come from a, a, a nuclear blast in the atmosphere. It could come from a lot of places, but it would be devastating if we were without electric power. Can you imagine what would happen? You couldn't get food. You couldn't get your uh, money. You, you, you couldn't travel. Your car wouldn't work. I mean, it's just horrible to think, contemplate. So the question is, should you put a, together some food? Well, how much are you going to store? Uh, you know, if you got a little dried food together, you could probably have something for about 30 days. I think having a generator is a pretty good move. I think if you could have a portable generator, something to make electric power, that would be a lot better than storing up food. But uh, you can't possibly get enough food to take you past a couple of months. And uh, you say, well, the crisis might be over then. Well, it wouldn't hurt to have a little something yeah. stashed away. But you need a source of water. But you need, if you could have a generator, that would be smart. All right. A few cans of tuna won't hurt, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have been a Christian my whole life and was raised in the church. My faith has always been strong, and I've always heard God's voice so loud and clear, but lately I've been struggling to hear his voice. And I find myself going in a circle with one foot in the world, one foot walking with Christ. I can't stop sinning on my own. I have never had so much anxiety, depression, and fatigue. I really want to know my purpose in life and really want God to speak to me again. Can you help me, Amber? All right. I recommend, Amber, that you get your Bible and that you take a pad of paper and a pen and you spend a day or two uh, in prayer. And the first thing you do is you think about yourself. What sins have you committed? And you write them down one after the other on a piece of paper. All right. And then you say, Lord, I ask you to forgive me for these sins. And I ask to be cleansed of them. Then you take that piece of paper, you ball it up, take a match and burn it up and say, all right, I'm now they're under the blood and I'm going to live for the Lord. And then you begin to live for him, having a conscience cleansed of dead works to serve the living God. You, otherwise, you know, your sins have, have well, your heart, your heart gets hardened and you need to break up your foul ground. That's what I'm talking about. All right, okay. go ahead. Good word. All right, Sherry says, a few days ago I was lying in bed and I prayed for forgiveness and asked the Lord to save me. I confess that I am a sinner and that I accept Jesus into my heart. I didn't say it out loud, but rather more of a whisper in my head. As I was praying, I had a tingling sensation travel through my body from head to toe. Is this the sign that I'm truly saved? I've always heard that when you're saved, you will know. I don't know if I am, and how do we really know? Well, how you really know is whether you love the brethren. You really know if you want to uh, keep the commandments of God. You really know 
uh, that you've been born again, that you serve the Lord. That's what you really know. But I mean, I, I don't know about tingling and stuff. I mean, maybe the Holy Spirit came into you and gave you a physical manifestation. I don't think we need to have that. Uh, it's, we take it on faith. But if you had something different, I mean, maybe the Lord touched you and that was the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, one last question. This one's from Reverend William. He says, I told a church family last year that their teenage daughter should not be counseled by a male secular counselor. Last night, I found out the teenage girl is back in secular counseling with another male, male counselor. I told them again, stop. She needs to be counseled by a female Christian counselor. Do you agree? Uh, I hate to say I, I don't really agree with that. I mean, I don't know why you have to have a female counselor. If, if you did, you'd, you'd rule out a whole lot of the, of the pastors who are counseling people. That's true. The idea of having a Christian, yes. I think to, to, to go to a secular counselor and have secular advice, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, these counselors may say, go have a, a, an affair, go have a rip-roaring affair and, and uh, have sex. I mean, they do that, you know. That's a way of, of relieving people of the, the uh, built-up uh, guilt feeling or whatever they have. I mean, you don't want to be uh, counseled by somebody like that. But in terms of male and female, I, I don't know anything in the Bible that says that's got to be, and I, I, I don't agree with it. Being a Christian is the, is the key, not uh, whether you're male or female. Exactly, male or female, because a lot of pastors, I mean, you don't want to rule out all the godly pastors who are trying to help their congregation. All right, what's next? All right, up next, a young driver runs off the road, and he and his girlfriend head straight towards concrete pillars. We hit the fourth pillar, and it actually ripped the truck in half, and it shot us up into the top. We did a 360 and landed back at the bottom on the fifth pillar. I just like thought I was going to die in a second. Mm. See how they miraculously survived this horrific crash with no injuries after this. Hunter Hanks and his girlfriend Erika were only 30 minutes from home when their truck hit a bump in the road. Hunter fought to keep control of the car, but eventually it hit not one, but five concrete pillars, smashing his truck in half and leaving Erika convinced that she would die any second. We were on the road back from my house in Florida. We had spent the Christmas break and New Year's with my family. We were right in Murfreesboro, which is about 30 minutes from the apartment. And I, I don't remember how it happened. I just remember hitting a hard bump and I look up and I saw the bridge coming at me in front of me. I was sound asleep in the passenger seat if I woke up to the truck hitting a pole. Everything slowed down. Once I realized what was going on, I looked to my left and there was a guardrail and there was no getting back on the road. And I was like, okay, I can't get back on the road. I have this bridge pillar coming up in front of me. I don't want to hit that head on. So I'm going to try and go around it. I remember grabbing the wheel and trying to go around the pole. Once my tires hit that steep hill right there, it threw me into the first pillar. And then after that, I kept trying to get up on that embankment. And each time it threw me into another pillar another pillar, another pillar. It's weird because obviously it's like a scary thing, but I was never scared. I just like thought I was gonna die in a second. And we hit the fourth pillar and it actually ripped the truck in half and it shot us up into the top. Um, we did a 360 and landed back at the bottom on the fifth pillar. I remember that last hit and everything was silent. When I realized I could move and I was okay, I look at Hunter. And I remember just seeing him up against the steering wheel, like blood everywhere, um, thinking he was dead. And I was just like screaming and scared. The next thing I remember was the paramedic over the top of me. I remember the light being in my eyes. We got taken in different ambulances. We didn't get to talk or anything like that. So I was just concerned with knowing he wasn't dead. When I opened my eyes, I um, saw my brother and immediately motion started to come to me. And once I got my bearings together, I was like, where's Erica? Somebody needs to show me Erica. 
Hunter kind of like snuck out to come see me. He just came in and um, right when I saw him, I just tears because he was walking. As soon as I walked in and I hugged her, my brother took video of it. And later he went and screenshotted some of the moments in that video. My goal with posting the story um, was to add some love to the timelines and like show the miracles that happen even though these bad things happen every day. At this point I'm still like, okay, well we lived and we have nothing wrong with us, so it can't be that bad. And then I went and looked at the truck and I was like, how did we live through this? And it was like two bubbles right in the cab of the truck. The back seats were crushed. Every, everything around the truck was crushed except for our two seats. And even looking at the pictures, I can't really look at it for too long. It's hard because I go back and forth from being thankful to being like, like cringing. Just seeing the truck, you like looking around and seeing how my side was untouched and how Hunter's was completely destroyed. Before the wreck, I always found myself wondering, all right, well, I'm not this you know, great Christian. If something ever happened, why would God protect me? After everything that happened, I found a very overwhelming peace that, wow, I failed you every single day leading up to that wreck, that New Year's Day, and you still found it in your heart to protect me. Everyone falls short of his love. No matter what, he's still going to be there to catch you when you fall, to protect you when things go wrong. When you are stressed out or um, scared of something or about to die, like Hunter and I, there's not one moment where God's not there. I want people to see that through the absolute worst of times, He hasn't left. Wow. God was with them. Incredible, Pat. Incredible to see that truck and know that they are walking around. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's okay. Go. Listen to this. We've got uh, an answer to prayer here from Brenda from Connellsville, Pennsylvania. She'd been suffering from a urinary tract infection for weeks. One day, she and her husband were watching the 700 Club when she heard you give a word of knowledge, Pat, saying, I believe your name is Brenda. Mm -hmm. You have a urinary tract infection, and God has just healed you. The infection is going. You will have no problem anymore. God just healed you. Brenda's husband said, honey, that's you. Did you hear that? They claimed the word of knowledge and immediately the pain and burning was gone. She has had no problems since that day. Praise, Praise God. And I didn't know, you know Brenda. Brenda in Pennsylvania. No. Great. All right, here's an email from Susan, Wednesday, October 18th. She said, I was watching this program and Wendy said, somebody has a very uh, painful hip due to arthritis. God is healing you. She said, I've been suffering with a burning pain in my hip for several months. I live in a three-story house and was able, not able to walk up and down the steps. And I said, yes, Lord, I claim it. The next day I got out of bed. I just walked straight down the stairs, had no pain. <laughs> next day I was speaking to my sister on the phone, and she said she heard the same word and claimed it for me. Oh, praise God. Isn't that marvelous? I love it. All right, folks, uh, we want to pray for you. Let me get down here. So we're going to... Hold hands. We're going to believe God. There's nothing impossible with the God we serve. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I join hands with my sister in Christ, and we believe God for the people in this audience. Somebody's got a fungal infection in, in your chest. I believe the name is George. And right now, God has healed you right now. There'll be a burning in your chest, cough, and the Lord has set you free. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Someone suffering with this a severe head pain. I don't know if it's a migraine or if you've had a head injury, but God is touching you right now. Just receive it and start rejoicing. You're healed in Jesus' name. Thank you. Lord. We pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit Jesus. to come upon you right now. Everything in, in your insides, your inner, all infection is going right now. There are a number of people that have infections. Uh, and the, the infections are being burned out of you. You'll feel fire in the middle of your being, and you are free from all the things, the colitis and the other things that have bothered you. You are healed from that right now. Yes. May the Lord's anointing rest upon you, and may the glory of the Lord be upon us. And we pray, Lord, right now for our nation. Yes. Lord, we know we're in dangerous times. 
and we're being threatened by external foes and internal foes. Give us peace and harmony as a nation. Bless our leaders. Give them wisdom as they make decisions that affect us all. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Yes, amen. I was just sensing that too, that a lot of people are just needing peace right now, That's a lot right. of anxiety, and, and the, just receive it. The Lord's yes. touching you right now amen. with His peace. Well, still ahead, meet YouTube sensation Chelsea Crockett. This social media superstar has more than 2.5 million fans, and she joins us live, and that's coming up. Welcome back to the 700 Club. A federal appeals court has cleared the way for a 17-year-old illegal immigrant to obtain an abortion in the United States. She's about 15 weeks pregnant. Federal officials at first refused to transport or release her so she could get an abortion, but the court ruled she could get one. Critics say the case could open the door for children to come to the U.S. just to get abortions. The Department of Health and Human Services is looking to help religious and faith-based organizations. It wants input on the barriers those groups face in their involvement with HHS programs. It specifically wants to know how groups have to deal with restrictions on getting, getting federal money, burdensome requirements, and how HHS could provide some helpful resources and tools. HHS will review the submissions after 30 days. The request comes a few months after President Trump signed an executive order to promote free speech and religious liberty. Remember, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website. It's CBNNews.com. We'll be back with much more of The 700 Club coming up right after this. That's right. Ask anything. This is our free gift to you when you call right now and just say, yes, I want to join the 700 Club. How much is it? Great question. 65 cents a day, $20 a month is all it takes to become a CBN partner and to help so many people. When we all join together, we can make a huge difference. If you're a fan of the show, if you like, maybe news is your favorite part. Maybe you love the fact that we dig water wells for people in, in all parts of the world. Whatever it is that you like about CBN, if you want to be a part of it, it's only 65 cents a day, and we need your help. So please go to your phones right now, the number on your screen, 1-800-700-7000, or you can log on to CBN.com. It's a great and easy way to give there. And again, when you do that, we're going to send you Pat's great new teaching called Ask Anything. These are biblical answers to some of today's life's most probing questions. And I got to tell you, it's pretty entertaining, too, and you won't believe some of the things people ask. You want to get this. It's our free gift when you call right now and say yes. Well, a million people saw her get her braces taken off. A million people watched her tackle her first day of high school. And a million people saw her go on her first date. Hmm, not sure I'd like that. Well, since 2011, Chelsea Crockett has lived much of her life on YouTube. And what started as a 13-year-old's attempt to break summer boredom has become a brand with a million and a half subscribers. 19-year-old social media sensation Chelsea Crockett doesn't agree with the media's standard of beauty. She believes that every girl needs to know that beauty comes from something much deeper. To not look on the outward appearance, looks are going to fade with age. In her book, Your Own Beautiful, Chelsea offers beauty tips and inspirational advice to help girls find their true identity, apart from today's perfect driven culture. Please welcome to the 700 Club for the first time, Chelsea Crockett. Chelsea, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I love your red dress, Thank gorgeous. Thank you, like yours. <laughs> no, you, we look like Christmas. <laughs> yeah, we Christmas. do. It's fall. <laughs> Now, you are a vlogger. For those of us who may not be familiar with that term, what does it mean? What is a vlogger? Well, a vlogger is pretty much anyone who puts out a bunch of video content online, YouTube in particular, and a lot of young people who are growing up in today's social media world puts out a lot of YouTube videos nowadays. And you started when you were 13, and you're 17 now? I'm actually 19. You're 19, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> you're, you're good, you're, you're good. Amazing. All right, well, tell us how you got started and how much you've grown your, your viewership over the years. So I started when I was 13, and I just started doing beauty fashion videos, and over the years, I developed a passion for just inspiring girls and just young adults in general. And whenever I was 
17 years old, I'd say. I wanted to just take my content in a different turn. Mm. And I... What turn was that? I really just formulated my relationship with Christ, mm. and I wanted to share more of my faith with the world. Amen. And so that's what I did. Was and that scary? It was, a little bit, because I got different reaction from people. Yeah. I got hate comments, but then I got a lot of encouraging comments. So Yeah, how... Um, how, how did you handle the hate comments when they started to come in, when you started to be more vocal about your Christian faith? It, it wasn't easy. I mean, I went in my room sometimes and I was like, yeah, I, I didn't know how to handle it. But then I tried to shift that into encouraging and uplifting myself because then I realized that persecution is actually a sign of mm. people taking that in and taking that to heart. It's kind of a good sign, actually. Yeah, you know, it says that in scripture. Yeah, it says that in yeah. scripture that it, it's a good thing. And so um, I, I just try to reflect on that and and change it into okay, good. Okay, so you're 19. You've been doing this since you were 13. That's six years. Um, do you ever feel like, you know, keeping your online content going, that's very time consuming. Yeah. Do you ever feel like you're missing out on real life because you're always posting? No, I actually don't. I, uh, in high school, a lot of people used to ask me that question because there's so much that you could do, like going to high school games and all that stuff. But I would set aside like two to three days a week to do all that stuff. And then I'd say, Dad, Mom, like I'm going to the high school game tonight. <laughs> like I'm not doing anything else. And I would just go out and have fun with my friends and go to Denny's at 1 a.m. and have fun. And so, I feel like I have a pretty good balance of a normal life, but then I get to do cool stuff like this. Like yeah. come we on go the to, show. we go. Well, we have Denny's here, but we we end up at IHOP after church yeah. up till 1 a.m. And, and Cracker Barrel. Do you guys have that? Yeah, we have crack, love Cracker pancakes. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. Your book is called Your Own Beautiful. Um, forward by Sadie Robertson, who's a friend yeah. of yours. Yeah, she's um, great. I just interviewed. You guys remind me so much of each other. Um, <laughs> what What is the main message, um, Chelsea, in, in your book? Well, in Your Own Beautiful, I really try to encourage young adults to just find their worth and value in Christ. Mm. And, and in, in this world and in today's just social media, there's so many other people trying to tell us who we are. Right. And there's also that just that negative voice that comes into our head when we, when we, see, each other, when we see ourselves in the mirror and yeah. when we are spending countless hours looking at other people's profiles online and I just want people to just see their true value and what matters. And you write about giving your life to Christ in the bathtub when you were 10 years yeah. old, yeah. but when did it really become a real faith for you? Well, I share a story in my book about whenever I went to a, an event called Discipleship Now. It's mm. for short, it's called DNOW. <laughs> and I had a moment with a bunch of my friends where we were in a room and we were just saying all these struggles that we were going through with our family and with each other personally. Mm. And I just had an experience with God where it just became really real with me. And that happened around 16, 17 years old. And I just remember really wanting to just share that with the world. And you also battled depression a little bit when you went away to college. What happened? So last year around this time, I was going to go to California and, you know, live the dream and document it <laughs> online because it seemed like a lot of YouTubers do that and I wanted to share that with people. Mm. But yeah, I, I was waking up every morning and I was not keeping any food down mm. and uh, that came along with the, the depression and... Was it just being so far away from home because you're from Southern Illinois, you said, right? And yeah. just being, and you were going to school in, in California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it, it seemed like the first week and a half, everything was going great. And then uh, I felt called out of the relationship that I was in currently. And then also... You have uh, a dating relationship, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and then uh, just all that boys, was going boys on. Boys can just get you all messed up. You yeah. Know? Uh, That's why, you know, Jesus, he's always there for you. <laughs> right. right. Um, but then also my dad got laid off from his job at the same time. Oh, and so yeah. that was hard for our family. There's just so many things going mm -hmm. on. And how did you finally, you know, get that peace back? Well, 
I just decided that wasn't the right time to go to school. Mm. And then I was able to focus on writing this book and I got to write a whole entire chapter on that. And now I'm able to help a whole lot of people. You know, good for you. you it sounds like you made the right decisions for yourself. You prayed about it. Yeah. And you've got a lot of people that are praying for you and uh, one and a half million people following you <laughs> on uh, social media. Um, well, you're an inspiration and you're a beautiful young woman. Thanks for sharing your journey, Thank which you. is um, just beginning. All right. Well, to learn more about Chelsea, pick up her book. It's filled with beauty tips and spiritual advice. It's called Your Own Beautiful, and it's available wherever books are sold. Plus, you can watch our social exclusive interview with Chelsea. Just go to facebook.com slash 700 club, and you will see a great interview with our social media team as well. Well, thank you so much. We have a beautiful scripture for you today from Psalm 91, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. From Psalm 91, one of my favorites. Well, tomorrow, World Series coverage you won't see anywhere else. Until then, from all of us here at the 700 Club, have a wonderful day and night. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.